It is Wednesday, my dudes. And yes, that's right. Planet Coaster is returning as a kind of routine upload schedule, not just every so often. No, I have a full series, a lot of a lot of footage captured now, uh, well over 40 hours of footage all ready to be put into a weekly episode. So get ready for this new series, uh, the title of which will be in the thumbnail and title of this video, but right now I still haven't really decided on a name for this park. I thought I'd just basically build away and get a nice sort of structure to it and then kind of decide on a name based on how the park looked. Haven't actually got that far just yet. I mean, this is the same thing for Neptune Park and even Crimson Tower to a much, much lesser extent where I got way, way into the series and I was like, I really need to come up with a name for this park and just came up with something a couple of minutes before I did the commentary. But this time I'm like, yo, I want to come up with something good because I am definitely very, very, very proud of this uh, park so far. It's easily the best park I've made. Uh, if nothing else from a realism standpoint, like I guess Neptune Park remains probably the most fantastical and probably the most exciting thing to visit if you were actually if you were to actually visit it, but I think from a realism standpoint, Neptune Park does leave a little bit to be desired. People, One of the criticisms of that series was people said that it was a pretty unrealistic park, and like the rides especially were quite unrealistic. And I agree, but I don't think that was the main problem with Neptune Park, and the reason why I wanted to just maybe not abandon it, because it's basically finished, but move on from it, I suppose, uh, for reasons I'll get to. But I feel like I should probably introduce this series which I haven't yet thought of a name for, but it will hopefully have a name when it goes live. <laughs> so, you know, you guys in the future will know more than me. Um, I've currently spent the evening uh, cobbling together. I've got four episodes edited, and uh, I've this is the first commentary I'm doing tonight. So I've, I'll probably... I will probably kind of do the commentaries week on week and just get the footage ready to commentate over because I don't want to just do a commentary and then some big news comes out and I'm way out of the loop. Uh, like, for example, saying on this commentary, you know, I'm, I'm very I'm looking forward to having Pro Jared uh, as a guest commentator in the next episode because, you know, he's about as family friendly as he gets. I don't want a situation like that <laughs> where I miss I, I misquote some big news that happened. So I'll probably carry on doing the commentaries week on week. But as for now, the footage is coming together quite nicely. So I hope you enjoy this series. This episode, uh, introducing the subject matter two and a half minutes in, always good, uh, is just going to be constructing the entrance building. And that's because one of the big regrets, I guess it's not regret for the build itself, but as a kind of YouTube series, one of my regrets for Neptune Park was the fact that the first episode is just building a car park. So the thumbnail of the series was always just a picture of a car park and nothing else. So this time we're going to start the series with the construction of the entrance building block and uh, going from there. So the actual thumbnail for this series, which will appear on the end screen of all the videos, will actually be a picture of a building for the park rather than just a generic looking car park. So that's kind of where I am at. So um, a lot of people ask me how I design buildings in this game. As you can see, I am currently designing a building. So what better place to talk about this topic than right now? Uh, I usually don't just design a building piece by piece. Uh, I will always have some vague idea of what I want based on something in real life. Because the best way to get your architecture or building design or anything in Planet Coaster looking realistic is to use some sort of real life muse. Google Street View is a godsend for Planet Coaster, but even just, you know, Google Images, well, you know, <laughs> Bing Images, uh, are a godsend for designing anything in Planet Coaster because it's very hard to get something that looks realistic unless you're using some sort of reference. So the actual kind of design influence, I suppose, for this entrance building is the uh, building on Fistral Beach, which is a beach in Newquay, Cornwall. Uh, there's like this cool looking building, which is these two rectangular buildings that flank this uh, central round structure. That's what I'm building here. I want it to have a rounded spire <laughs> as the roof which of course means that i couldn't use any of the stock roofs in planet coaster because they're all too small unless again you want to just create a round building so i created this custom thing here and just decided to clone it around so i had to make my own tiles so there's quite a high piece count here but you know it doesn't it's, it's not too bad planet coast is pretty good when it comes to high park count structures it's mainly it starts losing dropping frames when guests are in the park and when there's you know a lot of things going on but right, you know, right now, it's fine. And even now, I I've, I feel like 
I'm at least halfway through the entire park's construction at this phase, and the frame rate remains pretty good. I still don't know if I'm going to leave the park closed throughout the entire series like I did with Neptune Park, just because it means that my frame rate whilst playing is at a good level. I know that doesn't really affect you guys, because in case you hadn't figured it out, what you're watching right now is a time lapse. I can't actually play this game at this speed. Um, but when it comes to sh showing things like POVs of roller coasters and stuff, it would be nice to have a less choppy video. I know things like Cheat Engine exist to negate this, but you know, you know me. I'm very lazy. <laughs> so anyway. This is the entrance building. Yeah, we covered that. Well done. One of the things I wanted to achieve with this park was uh, having a more realistic look. Like, I think the most realistic I've come to so far in my Planet Coaster videos is the entrance bit of Neptune Park. Like, you come through the entrance building and you get to that first part of the park. Uh, I feel like at this point, this was made so long ago, people have probably forgotten. So I'll just try and describe what it was. The thing with Planet Coaster and why a lot of people's parks look unrealistic is because the game kind of lends itself to the idea of building a series like lots of rides connected by paths and if you were to look at a real park in real life it doesn't look like that at all like the ground is not just grass with just straight kind of paths of you know constant width connecting all the rides together basically in real theme parks the entire ground is just path like there is pretty much no dead space um, the whole ground is path. It's just big sprawling plazas everywhere. And those things are very hard to do in Planet Coaster. And that's why all my parks so far have, whilst I've tried to avoid it, have thus far just basically been a series of paths connecting rides. And Neptune Park was an attempt. <laughs> an attempt was made to not do that. So that's why the entrance of Neptune Park I'm probably the most proud of uh, in that series because it was basically just lots of plazas, but then gradually... I made the mistake of just building lots of roller coasters without any connections and then tried creating the paths and kind of features of the park in between the rides, which probably wasn't a great idea because it ended up just me and it ended up becoming me just creating paths between rides and it just looking like a generic planet coaster park at number 347 or whatever. I still like Neptune Park because uh, I really like the tower and just the general aesthetic. It would always have a place in my heart. I don't think Neptune Park was a bad build in Planet Coaster by any means, but I think it, in terms of realism, it, it left a lot to be desired. And so I intend to address that uh, itch with this park here. So this is kind of my take on what I hope to be a realistic looking park. So, uh, so far there's no crazy, crazy rides. Like, all the roller coasters, whilst none of them are replicas or particularly based on real life examples, I have been looking more closely at roller coaster Wikipedia pages looking at kind of things like track length, ride height, that sort of thing, because as I mentioned earlier, one of the criticisms of, planet, of my uh, Neptune Park was the fact that a lot of the roller coasters were quite unrealistic uh, because things like Venom, for example, were very, very large rides. I mean, you know, whilst there are rides like that in real life, they are fairly few and far between, whereas Neptune Park, every other ride, it seemed, was some gigantic thing. So I thought, let's just try and have kind of smaller scale parks, um, smaller scale rides. So in many, many episodes time, one of the rides in this park will be kind of a, an Incredible Hulk inspired coaster and its size and track length and you know overall height and all that is very similar to the actual incredible hulk coaster even though the only thing it really shares a semblance to is the fact it's a launch tunnel ride i should probably mention where i am right now i'm currently recording this uh okay that was dumb because you can see the upload date but it does this it does the state of the game we've just had the classic rides uh added to the game so that's the, includes the copperhead strike coaster and of course the basic the BNM sit down has re only recently been added, like maybe a couple of months ago, to the game as well. So obviously that's the uh, the Planet Coaster, um, the Planet Coaster, <laughs> the uh, the Incredible Hulk style coaster. Uh, that's that's what that ride is like because it involves it, it features like drive tire launches that sort of thing, which of course is what the Incredible Hulk coaster is. And it and it's like stock in game model, like the uh, default blueprint. If you don't want to build a custom ride, is basically just a Hulk replica. So that's clearly what they were going for here. Anyway, that's one of the things I wanted to achieve in this park, you know, realistic, propor realistically proportioned roller coasters and indeed the rest of the rides as well. Lots of non-planet coaster style pathways, but instead lots of sprawling plazas like you would see in real life parks. And I wanted a little bit more terrain interaction as well, because very few parks in real life are just bait built on completely flat pieces of land even things like you know six flags magic mountain which is quite a flat actually that's a bad example because it's got a big hill in the middle but you know a lot of parks in real life maybe like thorpe park 
might be a good example. I know it's on an island, but other than the fact it's on an island, the terrain is completely flat. And Disneyland's quite flat as well. But, you know, regardless, regardless, not not irregardless, that's not a real word. Uh, Regardless, (laughs) most theme parks involve some sort of terrain changing. Alton Towers would be a good example of this. It has a lot of valleys in it. Uh, And so I wanted to kind of make a park that wasn't just a completely flat piece of terrain. And I think I made good steps with this in Neptune Park. But it became very awkward in terms of the path transitions from the high terrain to the low terrain. It was basically just big flights of stairs on either side of the park, which isn't too realistic. I wanted a slightly more natural look. So here I designed the terrain first. I, I know I generally terraform parks anyway, but that generally involves just adding a body of water and then adding height and altitude changes to the terrain later on. Here I decided with this set terrain then built the uh, the pathways around it. So I thought this was kind of a cool looking bridge. That's another theme. As you can see, there's a central island here, which we'll cover more in the next episode, I imagine. But you can see there's a central island in this park, which is where guests are going to get to via this bridge here. And that's going to form the central hub for the whole theme park, really. And then there's going to be bridges coming off that central island. So this is one style of bridge. Uh, there'll be a couple more. There's a, suspen- there's a suspension bridge and another kind of arch bridge, actually. But, you know, there's going to be bridges. There's going to be bridges. There's going to be realistic rides. It's going to be a great time all round, guys. So I am I, I am very excited about you seeing this. I, I, I apologize, by the way, uh, again, very late on in the commentary, that I might not sound at my best right now because I am I, I currently either have... At first, I thought it was seasonal allergies... But I've got this really throaty cough as well, which don't really I don't really get with my admittedly horrendous seasonal allergies. I don't usually get this really throaty cough as well, and I'm feeling very kind of lethargic and fatigued all the time. So I think I might actually be slightly ill. Uh, either way, I'm a bit bunged up and all that. So sorry if I sound a bit ill in this commentary. I'm trying my best, <laughs> but apologies if it is coming across as a little bit too distracting. Anyway, there's the bulk of the entrance building constructed. Now we just need to do a few mandatory things like toilets. I will build the uh, actual ticket booths and indeed the car park at a later date. Like I say, I didn't really want the car park to be too early in the series because I didn't want the first few thumbnails to just be a picture of a car park. I wanted it to be like entrance building, roller coasters, rides, all that fun stuff. So at least this episode will be obviously the entrance building and that bridge that you've just seen me build. Uh, the next episode, I believe, will be the first roller coaster. We're getting right into it. It's going to be like a, a, an intimate light, which we'll discuss you know, as I build it, we don't want to get too deep, too deep into spoilers at this point. And uh, we'll go from there, I suppose. So I've been using these temple pieces a lot recently, actually, as uh, curbing. Curbing is one of those things I always find difficult in Planet Coaster. In fact, that's another thing I wanted to touch up on when I was talking about why a lot of people's theme parks don't look like realistic theme parks, but instead just look like Planet Coaster constructions. Is because the actual stock pathways not only are unrealistic because most theme parks are not really comprised of paths as such. It's just big sprawling plazas with rides plopped in the middle. Um, Having curbs on paths in this game also make the game look like a game, I suppose, rather than a a real park. Most theme parks will not just have, like, standard curbing throughout the entire park, but a varied curbing or no curbing. Or I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what I'm saying. But having, I feel like having the stock curbs uh, really makes it look like it was built in Planet Coaster rather than something that could organically look that or that looks like a real park. I'm very, I'm, I'm very tired. <laughs> um, I should probably go to bed at some point. Anyway, uh, yeah, yeah. So I've been, I've been using the temple wall pieces as curbing because the temple pieces are great because they are. They look like walls. They have the same sort of diameters as walls, but they can be moved to a much greater extent than ra- rather than just be uh, placed, uh, I, rather than just being able to be rotated along the x-axis and moved along the x-axis. They can also be rotated along the y-axis, up and down, left and right, tilted any which way and the other. They're much more diverse pieces than most. So I've been using the temple pieces a lot for curbing. I found that they're quite good for constructing curves. I feel like that was a very long, rambly tangent, but as you know, this my my entire Planet Coaster content thus far has been non-stop rambling because uh, that I don't know. I don't know. Like with Kerbal Space Bear, I suppose I can talk about uh, real-world examples of the mission I'm recreating, real-world inspirations, or you know, talking about the greater scheme of like. I feel like the content is far more varied. Like in Kerbal Space Program, there's a set. You go, you got to do the launch, then you got to circularize, you got to plan a maneuver node, then you got to encounter a planet and all that in planet coaster is just i'm building this entrance building 
this is it for the next 20 minutes. So it's hard to come up with kind of refresh, keep the topic rolling. So I end up just sort of rambling off on tangents. At one point, it was just a soapbox for me to talk about my day to day life. And then it kind of stopped being about that. And now I just end up talking about rubbish. But anyway, I hope you guys enjoy this series to come. As I say, I've been trying to focus a lot more on realism. As you know, it's been a while since I've played Planet Coaster, and I haven't just been twiddling my thumbs during that time. I've been moving house, so a lot of my free time has been consumed by having a house to get into working order. Um, but a lot of time, you know, I've been following all the nerdy subreddits, and I don't say that with an insulting tone at all, because I love those subreddits. Uh, but things like, you know, the roller coaster subreddits, and just following general theme park news, and seeing how things are built. Like, you know, I've been following the Copperhead Strike launch, and I'm actually now starting to get hyped for roller coasters. I know for a fact I'll probably never ride. Like, I remember following the uh, Steel Vengeance uh, news, and now I'm getting really excited for the Gwazi uh, RMC uh, over overhaul. So it's all looking pretty good. So uh, now I'm kind of more engrossed in the general kind of bird watching equivalent <laughs> uh, community for roller coasters and theme parks. I feel like I'm much more prepared uh, to build realistic structures. I suppose. And, you know, I've been binging a lot of people like Variable Gaming, Silverette, uh, Burrow Coaster, Mass Bandit, Mike Sheets, all that. All, the, all those people, all all the Planet Coast channels I've been binging a lot of. So I hope that what you see here is good. I've been chatting to Silverette a bit on Discord as well, and he said he was happy to uh, collaborate. So you got that to look forward to as well in very, very distant times. But also, like, I also am afraid of Silverette. I don't want him to add to this park because he will literally make, like, a, a bin and like i don't know he'll make like one lamppost next to uh, like a shop in the corner of the park and it'll be way better than anything else in the whole park and it will just detract from everything so i love silverette i'm also kind of afraid of him but you know maybe you guys want silverette in a commentary <laughs> to add some insight i don't know it's funny because yeah as i said i've been binging a lot of people like silverette and people like that and the general content I watch is a YouTuber in time lapse in a similar format to this, gradually describing how they built this, uh, you know, fence around a tree over the course of 11 hours. They talk about all the tree fences that inspired them, all the parks they visited, took reference photos of, of fencing around trees to create this perfect uh, canopy, you know, fence around this tree and it's beautiful and really to the layman it's the most boring thing in the world because it's just achieving nothing over a really course a uh, small course of time but for me it's like the most fascinating thing ever and inspiring and those are the kind of planet coaster videos i watch they're not the planet coaster videos youtube thinks i want to watch because all my suggestions are just i made a roller coaster that kills you i made a roller coaster that has a thousand g-forces and just ridiculous things like, I don't want to watch these. I want to watch a Scandinavian bloke spend uh, an ungodly amount of time making something that most people wouldn't even notice because it's so insignificant in the grand scheme of things. Like, we'll make a plant pot in the course of two hours. That's the content I love. So, YouTube, if you're listening, uh, Susan, I know you watch these videos. I know you like these videos. <laughs> uh, please, can you change YouTube's algorithm specifically for me? Because those are the videos I want to watch. Anyway, speaking of plazas ages ago, here is one here. One of the difficult things about making plazas in Planet Coaster is you can't really do it. You kind of have to make big, wide paths that loop back on each other, but you usually end up with little holes in those paths. So here I decided to just cover it up with a bench and hoped that no one would notice, which has not gone to plan because now I've just completely advertised that fact to everyone. But generally, that's a recurring theme we see in this video. I make plazas with holes in the middle because that's the only way you can really build them. And then you have to kind of fill it in with planters and lampposts, trees, that sort of thing. So that's pretty much uh, coming to the end of the actual construction of the entrance building. We've got that little obviously the initial entrance facade that was based on the building at Fistral Beach in Newquay. We have the back part as well with these the, a little miniature food court. The main food courts are going to be deeper in the park, but I really liked the way that overhanging terrace that looks over the river came out. Obviously, we've got the steamboat ride now, so I might add a little boat tour that goes underneath that bridge. But the thing is, it's like a boat on rails, and I'd, I kind of want to just have a normal boat, a bit like the one we had in RCT3, which is just a boat that sails along the water rather than just being on a rail. Maybe it will get added in the future, so I'm kind of just holding out until the very last minute. 
One of the things I'm doing with this park as well, which I never really learned my lesson when it came to this uh, in terms of Crimson Tower and Neptune Park, is I'm not building any transport rides until at least the vast majority of the park is complete. I'm not even going to consider it. A, because they might add new transport rides that look cool. Like they recently, I say recently, not recent, not that recently, they recently added cable cars and stuff. And similarly, they might add a really interesting transport ride like, you know, actual boats or something else. Like, I don't know, the, the suspended monorail, not that I'm necessarily clamoring for that but just as an example of a transport ride that isn't currently in this game. And elevators, please, Frontier. It'd be great to have lifts in this game. I can't remember the uh, how I got started on this topic, so I'll just press on and hope that I covered everything I set out to cover. Um, yeah, I, I'm not going to build any transport rides until most of the park is done, so I'm not just having to awkwardly construct paths and rides that head toward the general direction of stations that I built way in the past without really thinking about how I wanted the park to look. I'm just going to build the park first and then design the transport rides around that in terms of you know where would guests logically probably want to go on their transport ride rather than doing it the other way around because the Neptune Park steam drain, for example, is dumb. Because it goes to this station, it starts out well, right? Start The first station is by the entrance to the park, and then it just kind of snakes off to the top of this hill, and then there's a station there, but there's nothing else up there. So I guess we'll then have to walk miles to get back down to the rest of the park where all the track rides are, and indeed where the roller coasters are. So not the best designing there. Uh, same thing with Crimson Tower, really. I had to awkwardly design the park around the monorail, and, you know, again, Crimson Tower was just a series of interconnected paths, really rather than being a series of plazas and sprawling path types like a real theme park would be. So I can see my camera doing more and more lurching around as it goes, which means I'm doing more and more kind of overviewing and overseeing to make sure I've finished everything. So I guess we are coming to what I mean, I could just check the Vegas timeline, but I don't tend to look at it because as I mentioned in my latest Kerbal video, I when I when I'm looking at the footage whilst I'm talking, I tend to just get really panicked and start trying to like keep up with the footage and then I'm talking really fast and it's really hard to understand what I'm saying. So uh, yes, that's, that's, that's that. So I started out with this intention of building restaurants and stuff here and then I thought, nah, we'll just put these doors up. And I now realize that there are in fact paths here. So when I, in when I eventually, you know, I say maybe, when I, when I eventually, <clears throat> <clears throat> ooh, a little bit of throat build up just there. If and when, this would be a better choice of words, if and when I eventually decide to open this park to guests, I need to take these barriers that I'm placing now, actually. Uh, those red barriers there, what, I what you should do is you run them along the perimeter of buildings and then just sink them into the ground, because even though they're underground, guests will still know they're there, so they won't clip through walls and stuff, which is what they will do if paths intrude on buildings. Anyway, been rambling way too long. I really hope you enjoy this series and enjoy the title I came up with. Uh, more videos, hopefully every Wednesday, unless something disastrous happens, it will be every Wednesday. There are links on screen. Uh, one of them will eventually be the playlist when it's actually together. Otherwise, uh, enjoy the rest of your Wednesday. <laughs>